I am Damilola Shibawali, the Chief Executive Officer of Mark Midas Integrated Limited, a conglomerate comprising of Midas Movers, Midas Scaffold, and Midas Tokens. Back in secondary school, my dad has always wanted me to study computer science. Of course, tech girl, because we are all girls in my family. I have five sisters, so I mean, it's really hard for him. He would literally wish he could split my head into two and put mathematics in my head. It was tough even when I got into the university. You know why? <laughs> because I wasn't really, uh, I mean, fond of maths and calculus, of course, was really tough for me. Okay, I persevered and I graduated with a 3.4. I did it for my dad, trust me. I had to give that to him. But did it shape me or not? Of course it did. It, it did shape me because I actually love the men's world and the men's um, professions. I love their career. I love that they are, they are able to do a lot. They have a lot of options. You know, men have options to be carpenters. They can, uh, I mean, do electric, elect, electricals, electricians. I mean, they have so many professions. And we women, we women are limited to being a lawyer, being an accountant, being a fashionista, being a hairstylist, and the likes of it. I didn't really like these things. So what did I do? I learned from my father. Hmm. So my dad is an electrician and he's also a scaffolder. Yes. So scaffolding is a trance generational business. I learned from my dad. I learned from the same person who wanted me to be in the men's world. Tech though, tech. When people ask me how I convinced my father to join scaffold business, I did not. I just created that niche for myself. I created it myself. Did he accept? No. But <sighs> I was learning from him, from him without him knowing. So I'll draft his emails for him. I'll draft his quotations for him. Send out his emails, you know. I mean, his past clients, I cannot mention them. I'll draft all these things and send them out for him. I was learning. One or two times when I'm back from school, because I was a boarder, I would join him on this, I mean, on site and all of that and see what's happening. I know what the sockets are. I know what clamps are. I know what the clips are. I know what a double edge socket is. I knew all of that even before I started the scaffold business. So that was how I created my own niche for myself. And I always told myself that one day I was going to do this. I was an administrator for three to four years. Yes, for three to four years, I loved that job. In fact, I can tell you that I still do administration. I mean, I still consult. So I didn't let that part of me go, but it did not stop me from doing what I wanted to do. I mean, breaking that barrier for myself. Damilola is a mom of one, and trust me, I was not prepared for the challenges I was going to face in the scaffold industry. Not to even mention the college. Let's leave that aside. It actually felt like I chose the wrong time to join the scaffold industry because I just had a son. Then I just had a baby. I had a baby three months ago, and I told myself, okay, it's time. Yeah, three months, you have to resume work, right? Yeah, three months maternity to leave. And I told myself, it's time, it's time to resume again. And I decided, I'm not doing 9 to 5 anymore. I want to start my own business. I'm ready. It's time. It's time to break the barrier. So <laughs> I started off uh, in 2020, October 2020 precisely. That was when I started, you know, putting my money together, putting my coins together in bits, you know, to invest in this business. And yes, did I talk to my dad? I did, but I didn't tell him what I wanted to do. I, I just spoke to him like I was inquiring for someone. That was what I did because I mean, it might seem a bit off to him. Why are you doing that? Stick to your job. You know how parents are. Oh, you just had a baby. Oh, you know all of that. I didn't want to hear all of that from him. So you know what I just did? I just picked from him again without him knowing. And then I started the business. But I thought I chose the wrong time. But no, I did not. It was actually the peak period towards the end of the year. Look at me thinking I wasn't going to make money. Oh, it's going to be hard. Oh, who is going to see me? Oh, how do I push this business out? Hmm. Scaffold peak period is actually the last quarter of the year. So it made it very easy for me. It was scarce. Scaffold was really scarce. And that was when I came into the business with my own materials. Guys, <laughs> I did it. It took me two clients to actually, I mean, put myself in the industry. Before I knew it, 
real estate developers knew me here and there. Oh, we need scaffold. Oh, do you have acro pipes? Oh, do you have? Oh, I need 500. And yeah, it was becoming overwhelming for me as well. Okay, so when they call, the problem here is this, the challenge here is this, because I won't call it a problem, it was just a challenge. And yeah, we are women, like we always do, we break, the, we break problems now, our challenges now into pieces. Hmm. So, madam, where is your ogre? And I'm like, which ogre? I am the ogre. And in fact, I was, <laughs> I was the project manager. I was the customer care rep and I was still the CEO. <laughs> that was a challenge for me. It took a lot of convincing. Like, I won't be climbing this scaffolds myself. I won't be, I mean, I won't be erecting this scaffold myself. I won't be installing it myself. My father does not er erect himself. He doesn't install himself. So why do you expect me to install myself? Discouraging and judgmental comments from prospects. Hmm. It's very challenging i get a lot of i don't think you can handle this yes prospects can be very blunt and that can be hidden i mean can be piercing you i mean why would you say that why would anyone tell you to your face i don't think you can handle this when you actually have the materials i mean you need something and i have what you need but your problem is because i am a woman hm. then i take a step back and I call who? My dad. Hello, project manager. <laughs> yes, I had to appoint him as a project manager. That was how I started. And then I tell them, oh, speak to my project manager. He will handle this. And I take a step back. Hmm. It took me about six months. Yeah, I was in my show for a while. It took me about six months to start saying, you know what? If you need this, call me. Or if you need this, let me know. Trust me, they go and they come back to you because they have nowhere to go. You need me. I do not need you. You need my materials anyway. Okay. Now let's talk about haulage business. They are a handful. Clients would, you know, sometimes, so most times anyway, I'm going to, I, I would pick up this um, a call from one of the clients you, who probably wants to hire my trucks, you know, to go to Port Harcourt or Delta State. And then the first thing some people would say is, Hello. Oh, I thought I was going to hear from a man. Why would you say a thing like that? Even if you think, even if that came, that thought came to you, why would you say a thing like that to anyone? As usual. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's a lady. Sorry. So how may we help you today? We continue from there. I am just saying, there are challenges in every career. Every career I mentioned. The doctors are facing their own challenges. The lawyers are facing their own challenges. But you see this gender bias challenge. It's something you and I have to break. I don't think it will go anywhere. I think you have to create your niche. I think you have to understand your own value. I think you have to stand in as a man and a woman. That's how I broke that barrier. That's what I did. That's how I got here. And I think you can too. My colleague once asked me if my dad was in support of this business that I was doing because, I mean, of course, we're competitors. Well, yes, he did support me. In fact, we're partners. <laughs> He's my client. I am his client. I mean, we share ideas and he loves it because, I mean, that's what he has always wanted and that's what I want as well. And you see, computer science, I get a lot of questions about that. That, did I do anything in that field? Yes, I did. I partnered with people. Yes, I told them about it and it was like, so you still finally did this tech thing? I said, yeah, but it, I didn't do it for you. I did it for me. I did it because there's money that I can cash out. <laughs> and he just started laughing. So, scaffolding is not the only business. I mean, it's not the only male dominated business I am into. I am also into the haulage business called Midas Movers. I, that, that's what I mean that. Midas Movers is a multi-serviced uh, company ranging from relocation services, truck hires, wrapping services, professional wrapping services, professional loading and load, offloading of uh, services, professional relocating services, home relocations, office relocations, you can call them commercial and residential relocation services. 
Okay, so we know that this um, sector is dominated by the male. I mean, I, I have not met any female uh, colleague before. All of them, all of them in the college moving services are male. Okay, so that's challenging too. I mean, they even call me. I mean, okay, two of my colleagues have called me one. They called me one time and they said, "You know, it's because you are a woman." One client reached out to me and told me that you charge them six hundred k. We are charging nine hundred, and I am like, "No, be the same thing now." As an employee. I bagged some awards, yeah. But as an employer, this hits differently. I mean, in the space of two years, someone out there was able to recognize our crafts, our efforts, and Mark Midas got this. Mark Midas Scaffold got this award in the space of two years. So I am dedicating this to the clients, to my clients, of course, the real estate developers. In fact, the artisans, some of them recommended us. Most of them recommended us. Thank you so much. This is to you for believing in my craft, for believing in us. Thank you so much. Anyway, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for watching this. I hope you learned one or two things from my own story. My name is Damilola once again. Don't forget that name ever. Thank you.